Hey, this is Scott Townsend, and I'm glad to announce that we've got two new subscribers to the show, Pops Daylight Donuts and Castafly Outdoor Adventures. Uh, the first one, Pops Daylight Donuts, man, they've got the best tasting donuts, sausage wraps, pastries in Northeast Oklahoma. And also, if you'll tell the staff there, hey, Scott Townsend said to give me a large spicy pig, they'll give you a free large spicy sausage wrap. But you have to tell them Scott Townsend sent you. So tell them, hey, Scott Townsend told me to tell you to give me a large spicy pig. So there's the offer. There's the, there's the call to action. So go to Pops Daylight Donuts. Say hi to Mark for me. And uh, yeah, go to Pops Daylight Donuts and get you some. The other sponsor is Castafly Outdoor Adventures. Adventure, that's where it begins. We look to create and document our moments in time while embracing the majestic wonder and beauty of the great outdoors. Our quest is to explore the back roads of the Ozarks, camping, fishing, and just getting lost. Refresh your spirit and join us on our next adventure. Paul and his crew invite you to subscribe to the Castafly Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Welcome to the Scott Townsend Show, brought to you by Dietzo Man Productions. Hey, this is Scott Townsend, and thanks for joining the Scott Townsend Show. And today I have with me a special guest. He says he's an average guy with a love of space exploration, but I would beg to differ. He's way more than average, and uh, he does definitely have a love for space exploration. A good friend of mine, Shane Nix. Shane, how's it going? It's great. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. I, uh, Shane and I used to have some really good conversations about space and space exploration, and with Mars landing coming up uh, this Thursday, uh, which dates this podcast, we, uh, I thought you know, it'd be good to have Shane on and get his perspective on <clears throat> what's going on right now since the world is looking at Mars and Thursday all, all eyes will be on TV sets and uh, computer screens watching Perseverance uh, land, hopefully. So anyway, how did you, let's start with the, your uh, beginning uh, with uh, uh, space exploration. How did you uh, fall in, quote, love with space exploration? Well, it started when I was a kid. I had an uncle who was part of the cassini Huygens mission to Saturn and Titan. And oh. I just thought that was the coolest thing in the world, that we could send a satellite that far and take pictures and send them back. And wow. he really fed into that. And I had some cool posters that he sent me and <laughs> lots of neat things. So we've got this uh, Mars uh, Perseverance uh, rover landing Thursday. Um, why is Mars important to, to us? What, 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 what's important to, about it? Well, Mars can really tell us a lot about the building blocks of life and if they're even possible on another planet. So Earth exists in kind of a Goldilocks zone where things are just right for life. We're not too hot, we're not too cold, we're not too close to the sun, we're not too far from the sun. So Mars can really tell us a lot about the beginnings and possibly the endings of life. And uh, we're really trying to expand our search for life elsewhere. We could possibly expand the Goldilocks zone as well to include other places in the future for external planets. Right. What's the um, objective or objectives of the uh, Perseverance rover on this mission? So it's really looking at four main ones. Geology, we're looking at the bottom of a lake bed on this one. Mm. The Jezero Crater, it used to be a lake the size of Lake Tahoe now. Jezero? Jezero Crater, yeah. And they found on Earth that the best place to look for life, fossils, micro stuff, is always going to be at the bottom of 
ex extinct lakes or current lakes. Hmm. So that's what we're aiming for here is to drill rock samples into the bottom of this lake. We're looking for micros and it's, it's going to be small life. We're not seeing any large fossils laying around Mars, at least not yet. <laughs> oh, wow. And but, uh, uh, yeah. And so astrobiology is another one. What's that all about? Astrobiology is the hunt for life outside of our own planet. Hmm. So it would be anything. We're still be, looking for life on Mars. Yeah. Still looking for life on Mars. Yep. Or, or the, the uh, historical life on Mars. Yeah. Yeah. it will be past and extinct at this point. <laughs> <laughs> no little green men running around. Yeah. Um, the other objective, uh, it was the uh, preparation for human prepping for us. So that one's really neat. They're, they sent up a package that's going to attempt to create oxygen out of the really thin carbon dioxide atmosphere that Mars has. And if that small package works on a small scale, they can scale it up for human habitation later on. They've also sent along a weather package on top on the uh, Perseverance rover that's going to be measuring Mars climate long term. So they'll get a better, better understanding of Mars weather and climate, seasonal highs and lows, storms, that sort of thing. So <clears throat> why are we so interested in inhabiting Mars? And, 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 let, and let's see, how would, I, how would I say that? It seems like we would want to first focus on inhabiting the moon since we've already been there, yes. then Mars. And we haven't even done it on the moon yet. So I would think we would, we would start with, but that's just my small thinking. What, what do you think about that? They, they are pushing for a moon base. That, that is happening. I think a lot of the Mars is coming from, we haven't been there yet as people. The trick is getting there as people. So we're trying to do as much of the science beforehand as we can, because people really don't keep well on seven month missions with no food. <laughs> um, but the moon is easy it. to get to. And <coughs> there's been a lot of talk that we should be setting up a, a forward base on the moon to make the jumps to Mars a little easier. Mm. And that, that will come, I believe. Mm. But Mars is more of a, we haven't been there yet. So we want to send people there. Okay. All right. I get that. The, uh, one of the more interesting Oh, I forgot the fourth one. The fourth objective. Uh, what's that? The uh, sample caching. Sample caching. So, the, uh, what is that? So they're going to be drilling. Um, it's almost like the oil derricks or the uh, the oil drills here. They have a hollow core drill bit that's going to pull out pieces the size of classroom chalk, and mm -hmm. then it's going to insert it into thirty metal tubes stored in the bottom. It has a robotic arm underneath the robot, and then it's going to kind of drop those samples as it goes along so that they can be retrieved and sent back to Earth later if NASA, NASA wants them back. Hmm. One of the, it's all interesting. It's all super cool. Um, it's, <clears throat> you know, the, then there's the sky crane. Uh, can you talk that a little amazing. bit about, yeah, can you talk a little <laughs> bit of what's the sky crane and, and, you know, they used to, I, I guess I'll, uh, they used to have an airbag wrapped mm -hmm. around the rover and it would bounce on the surface <laughs> and then come to a, at some point where it would deflate. Uh, what's the sky crane? What's, what's that all about? Sky crane is really neat. So when the, uh, hits the Martian atmosphere, it's going to be moving 13,000 miles an hour when it slams into the Martian atmosphere and it's going to be slowing down, slowing down. It's going to be using that ablative plating on the bottom. It's going to glow super hot. And it's going to slow down to the point where it can deploy a parachute. That parachute's going to keep slow it down to about 200 miles an hour. But even then, it's still going too fast to survive. So they're going to drop the bottom off, that ablative plating. And then the uh, sky crane is going to eject from the bottom, right off the bottom. And uh, it's got like these Iron Man jetpacks on the corners. It's really cool. Yeah. And then about... 40 feet or so from the surface, it's going to start lowering 21 feet of, of uh, I'm sure it's cable from the bottom, while these thrusters are providing opposing thrust upwards. So it's going to be acting like an air brake with these giant thrusters on the corners. And it's gonna slowly, while the, the thrusters are hovering, it's gonna slowly lower the rover to the surface. 
So it can, it, it, I imagine a lot of us have probably seen um, the SpaceX rockets that come back to Earth and uh, land <clears throat> with pinpoint precision with those type of boosters, you know? I'm oh, guessing yeah. it's kind of like that, maybe? Yeah, everything is autonomous because the, uh, the signal takes between 5 and 20 minutes at light speed. Most of the time, it's about 12 minutes for a signal to reach from Earth to Mars. Mm -hmm. So nobody's going to be flying this thing. Everything is autonomous. Hmm. It's all programmed in. Wow. And, so, and then the other cool thing is this uh, helicopter that they have uh, oh, under, so un cool. yeah, under the rover. So this helicopter ingenuity, uh, you know, when I was uh, kind of looking into it some, it uh, just looks like a regular... I don't know, drone helicopter kind of a thing, but uh, it does. What, uh, what's special about this one versus one that, might, that we might be flying around here? We've, well, it deploys from the drone itself and it becomes a drone or it deploys from Perseverance and it becomes a flyable drone. This is cool because we've never flown on another planet. So this is like a second Wright Brothers moment. It's four pounds, so it's not a huge one. And it's fully, it's autonomous once they send it the programs for the day. So they're going to upload a flight program for it. It's going to fly. I think it can only fly about uh, 22 miles an hour, 23 miles an hour. And the range isn't super far, but the fact is it can move a lot faster, farther than the rover can. Because hmm. the rovers are only moving one to two miles an hour with the nuclear battery. They're big and heavy and slow to save battery power. These little flight ones can go a lot farther. I think the rover what, is like a ton, weighs a ton or something yeah, like it's, that. It's bigger than it looks, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and the flight, if the flight works with a smaller one, that means they should be able to scale it up in the future for manned missions to mm -hmm. make farther expl exploration. They can hit a lot farther, a lot faster, and sample a larger sample size. So we've got uh, some guys like flying drones here um, on Earth. Uh, we've got guys here with joysticks flying this Ingenuity on Mars. So they'll, they'll upload a flight mission to it, but nobody's going to be flying it with joysticks. Mm. They're just going to tell it, fly here and take this sample. Fly over here and take this sample. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to do everything on its own because of the light speed delay on the transmissions hmm. even traveling at light speed it's so far it takes 12 minutes just to get there <laughs> oh man and and cold you know uh, uh what is like 130 degrees below zero at night or something like that yeah <clears throat> i found it interesting that the uh the rotors on the uh ingenuity are longer and they spin faster because the atmosphere on mars is a lot uh, thinner. It's very thin. Yes. So, you know, here on earth, a helicopter can screw through real dense atmosphere, oh, yeah. and go, you know, pretty quick. But, uh, if there's nothing to screw through, basically <laughs> there's no, uh, uh, the atmosphere is so less, but the good thing about it is they, it doesn't have to fight as much grav, uh, gravity as what we this do. This is here true. On earth. It will be lighter. Yes. Hmm. So it'll, it'll be fighting less. Yeah. What do you what do you hope happens with this mission? I'm hoping Personally. for a smooth touchdown to get everything on Mars and confirmed safe. And then I'm really excited to see how the, the helicopter ingenuity performs. It's uh that's a really big deal. The the rover, we've done that. It's got a new science package this time, but we've done that. Yeah. And it's it's kind of it's the safe option. I'm really excited about the first flight. That's gonna be super cool. Right. And to see how that works and what they, they experience from that and bring home. Well, Shane, thanks a lot for giving us your insight on Mars and sharing oh, your passion, for sharing your passion for the space exploration. And uh, let's hope on Thursday that they have a safe landing and we might find some, might find some fossils worth uh, looking at. Absolutely. All right. Well, if you uh, like the show, if, uh, I invite you to share, like, subscribe to the Scott Townsend Show on uh, 
you, uh, iTunes or wherever you get your podcast or your, wherever you listen to your podcast. And you can also uh, watch us on YouTube. You can like, subscribe, and share that as well. Um, so for Shane Nix, this is Scott Townsend. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you later. Scott Townsend Show is a Deedso Man production. For more episodes, visit the Scott Townsend Show YouTube channel, listen on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.